Hey everyone, Sir Terrible here again. And today we're gonna bring you some Timo Kalen Puffcast, but with Frelier, which I think has become the much stronger version compared to the Bando City Bench shirt that you have seen of T Kalen and Timo. The deck gives Timo Kalen a lot of protection that he wouldn't have before and a lot of survivability that you don't find in Bando City, right? So the reason that we're on failure is because stuff like Elixir of Iron can save our Timo against removal like Mystic Shot. And stuff like the Brito Steel and the Three Sisters or the Flash Trees can allow us to block with Kalen in certain situations. And stuff like the Share Spoils, which is my favorite card in this failure version, allows us to have a lot of good draw and be able to draw our Teemo or draw our Puff Cap Peddlers or our Karina in certain situations or killing as well. Like a lot of our cards that we draw with share spoils ends to be really good. So those tools from failures are enough to make this deck better than the Bandle City version and actually makes Teemo killing a very good competitive deck. So today we're going to spend some time showcasing exactly what I mean by that. So hope you stick around and enjoy the games coming up soon. And if you do, make sure to like the review below and subscribe to us we post lr videos every single day enjoy the games in this match we're going against talia malphite they do play quicksand some of them also play the strike uh wow i'm actually a big fan of these share spoils i'm a big fan of these share spoils i think i'm gonna remove it though in in, in hope that i get like the uh the peddler Okay, we get it anyways. So now we can go Teemo into share spoils. And I think that should be okay. We get the five shrooms. So we can go Teemo, share spoils. Hope that we get the peddler. The peddler is the best that we can get here. We can level up Teemo as early as next turn. And we're gonna have a level up team on the field. So yeah, let's go share spoils now. No peddler sucks, but at least we get I guess some other units. Like, I, I guess it could be. It, 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 this is worse. This is worse. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? I wanted more. I wanted more. I'm concerned about quicksand. So I don't know if I actually commit for the team of level up. I guess I have the flash freeze to save it. I think we go for it. I think we go for it. We have the flash freeze to save the team. If the opponent goes for the quicksand. I think this is correct. This is going to get 30 shrooms. So this is going to force a quicksand out now. And we have the flash freeze. And it's not a quicksand. So we're just chilling. Now. I don't know. The point is going to have Talia, right? Oh, wait. This, this is going to be crazy, actually. Well, we have the flash freeze. We have the flash freeze. And we get the peddler now. So Talia is going to create everything to be come out, right? So this is the problem. The opponent got their big turn. The problem is that now we have this, right? And we have insider knowledge. So we have flash freeze. Adding more shrooms to their deck. Let's block like this. And as long as the opponent doesn't have access to like a quicksand, this team was going to double the shrooms again, and then we can go investigators to try to draw and then have insider knowledge as well to back it up. What's the punish to me playing chunk one first? A strike? I guess if the opponent has a strike, that is a punish. I'd rather just get this. That's a, that's a 62 shrooms. Like, if the opponent had a strike, that could be the punish there. We have enough to survive next turn. We just need to sacrifice all our units. Oh, but we... No, we wouldn't have been able to beat this. I guess we had the flash freeze to beat the strike. But I wanted to have an investigator. I think at this point, I need to start forcing them to draw. So, so this is better because now I can go chump womp, go double mushroom cloud, and play one investigator. Opponent could have malphite next turn. Yeah, see, that's a duel. I'm okay with this. I don't think I need I don't need team anymore, right? I don't need team anymore. I think at this point we're trying to kill them with the with the shrooms. If the opponent plays Malphite, they tap out of uh Ah, uh, okay. Um do I still have enough blockers? 
5, 8, 10, 11. We just need to stun that. That's 5, 6. We still have enough blockers, right? Still have enough blockers here? We have the three sisters. That's five shrooms. The only downside is that we don't get to play the insider knowledge. We'll have to play the three sisters and sacrifice the peddler. If the opponent plays Malphite here, we just go for the insider knowledge and the investigator, right? So the opponent has to open. I hope that I don't have another freeze. And this is going to be five, six damage. We're going to live at two. We technically have enough for flash freeze plus insider knowledge if the opponent has like a way to kill us. Right? So we just go flash freeze here. Like if the opponent actually has a way to buff up their units to do the last two damage, we should be okay. They don't have any burn, right? Actually, they do. They have the they have the four drop, the the six drop, right? That is it a six drop? Okay, I'm gonna have a little inter intervention here. Is it a six drop or a five drop? They do have some burn. Let me uh. Oh man, I forgot that card. It's a target car. That's part of the Malphite package. Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker is a six drop. So when it just showed us that they tapped out of the Stonebreaker, right? So the Stonebreaker actually does deal the two damage to the Nexus. So I was trying to think what burn the opponent could have. And that actually is the burn that they will need to win. Okay, opponent ends up killing the Investigator and not the Teemo. So now we have Teemo, which if the opponent does have a Quicksand, means that we push two damage plus whatever shrooms. And now the opponent also tapped out of the six drop. Yeah, we go like this, right? Opponent tapped out of the six drop into battle negation. So we always have the insider knowledge to back us up after. Yeah, the Stonebreaker is the burn that they have. But if they play Stonebreaker because they tapped out of the iron negation and they had it, they are not able to beat the insider knowledge. If they actually didn't go for the Sunburst, they would have had enough mana for Rider Negation and potentially able to survive. There's no way, right? Okay, I was going to say five. Or there was actually a chance that we would have drawn Silver Shrooms. But the reason, that, that was part of the reason why I didn't play any units last turn because I knew the Stonebreaker was at least a five for a set drop. So once the opponent played that Landmark and they tapped out of the Stonebreaker mana, I was able to go ahead and play my Investigator and be okay. So... GG's. In this match, we're going against Nora and Jane. Okay, so... Oh. They have, like, Pytos and stuff like that, which make this team a little bit more awkward. And obviously, Nora. I think I'm supposed to force the Pytos out of them, though, if they have it. Like, if they have Pytos here, I think we force it out. I think we force it out. Okay. They don't have Pytos. All right. So the Pytos check has been passed. We can actually level up Teemo with the Motion Cloud and the Motion Cloud here. I wonder if that's correct or do we save everything for the Peddler? It might be better to save it for the Peddler, to be honest. Although, leveling up this Teemo while having Elixir of Iron as a backup seems kind of crazy to me, too. If the opponent doesn't play Nora here. So the opponent didn't play Nora. Because I mean, having 30 shrooms in their deck right away, that's that's more value than the way the peddler can give me, right? Opponent didn't play Pytos last turn, so I can probably put them on not having Pytos. Um there's a chance that if I block this, that the opponent could get an elusive portal. So, the correct action is actually not to block it. Because the opponent could get an elusive blocker for the Teemo. Because, like I said, we're going to commit here for the Teemo level up with Elixir of Iron as a backup. And just put the 30 shrooms on the opponent. 
opponent didn't have Pytos on turn one. I guess they could have a stun here. They would need to commit the stun right now. Yep, they would need to commit the stun, and I'm okay eating up the stun, right? We still have the Elixir of Iron. We ate up the stun, and the opponent still has the 15 puff caps. We lose the second Teemo, but that's fine. Okay. So we can play the chump one and be okay. <laughs> I've never heard that line before. And we jodels in uniform do like a womp. Same situation again. Do we... Do we... I have to stop blocking though. I don't know that I can start... I, I don't know that I can keep taking this damage. So even if the opponent has the potential of getting an elusive, an elusive blocker, I think I have to go for it. I think at this time I do want to play the Peddler though. And that's one shoe, so he set up the shit. Like, I want to play the Peddler because if this goes through, there's going to be a lot of shoes between the Mushroom Clouds, Elixir of Iron, and the Peddler, right? Stage so we get. Set. Oh, they can stun the Teemo, huh? So they can actually stun the Teemo here with the Gen. But that's not true because he goes to the weakest. So the stun goes to the weakest unit. If we put the Elixir Ryan on the Teemo, it will actually go to the Chump. So if we bait the opponent, he... Oh, no, okay, opponent just lost. Never mind. <laughs> All right. So we had an out for the stun, right? Our out for the stun is that we could play the, uh, the Elixir on the Teemo. And it would have actually kept... Uh, like, it would have stunned the Chump once instead. The opponent just straight up loses here, though. 60 Shrooms. All we're looking at is for Karina. And we have multiple draw for Karina. Like we have multiple draw for Karina. Now, the opponent will be able to stun Teemo here and then kill it with the uh, Lotus Trap. Ah, uh, sorry, with the Deadly Flourish. If the opponent goes for that and down to save the Teemo by playing Elixir. Otherwise, we can easily draw another Teemo. So, there's Teemo, there's Caitlyn. So, Teemo, Caitlyn. Um, opponent doesn't get the fear. The, Opponent ends up getting all the all that stuff and doesn't really get what they need. Yeah, so they get to kill the Teemo here. Or well, not kill it, but stun it. With the Deadly Flourish. And we're going to have to play Elixir. We can block the rest. Opponent, opponent is still far away from their Red Tyrats. So we can go elixir, share spoils, share spoils. Yeah, so this is gonna this is gonna quote unquote kill the Teemo. We can block here. We can block. I guess if we go like this and down to kill this girl, uh, we can chump block one of these guys and then play elixir to save the Teemo. So the Teemo gets saved. Actually, this ends up getting stunned now because of the Deadly Flourish. But it means that the Deadly Flourish doesn't kill anything. So maybe we don't block with the Teemo. Maybe we don't block with the Teemo to play around a Pytos. Yeah, we don't block with the Teemo to play around a Pytos. We can go share spoils, pull more shoes in the opponent's deck. We get Karina, we go another share spoils, pull more. We get Peddler, we can chill. No need to use the second share spoils just yet. Autopus, all right. Uh, the opponent could have, the opponent could have the broad main, right? So this is a, this is a broad main deck, right? So opponent could have the broad main. So I think it's probably correct to just attack with Teemo first, force a second stun, or at least force the broad main out of them. I think we I think we just win anyway. So opponent has 66 puff caps and we have Karina. And yeah, I mean they're gonna hit the share spoils, right? They're gonna have 120 something. Uh, 130, right? So we go like this, Karina sits. We have insider knowledge to follow up if necessary. That's uh 
130? 130 puff caps? Huh. The share spoils. That's why I love the share spoils in this deck, right? It could, it could have let me join to Karina, Caitlyn, or Timo. All of which would have been very good if the opponent had a way to remove Timo. Ended up working out for us that we drew the Karina instead, but we have three Karinas in our deck. Like, the share spoils join us at Unity is so good. Yep, that's cool. So then we just go like this. And how many podcasts do we think is going to activate? 130. And like, that's what we open attack, right? Because of the broad main. So 130 puff caps, 28 cards, five on the, the five on the top. 28 means 28. I mean, 30, 60, 90, 120. We're, we're looking at a little bit more than four puff caps per draw. And this is five. So on average, we should be hitting something like 20 puff caps here. A little bit more than 20. Obviously, my average is a little bit off. It's just an estimate. So this should technically be like an OTK, if the, even if the opponent was at 20 HP, which obviously wouldn't be possible since we've been attacking with the Teemo. I think opponent rich good enough. So I mean, <laughs> honestly, this deck feels really good. Like having the friendlier tools, like Elixir of Irons and stuff, to save our Teemos, uh, having the freeze to stop the attacks, having the share spoils to get our, our units, it's, a, it's one of the best draws that you can have in this deck, get that, because it's guaranteeing the unit. So, we ended up hitting 25. So, like I said, in average, we should be hitting more than 20 with this Karina. And there we go. GG's. In this matchup, we're going to against this Samira. Now, we're not playing Flash Bombs aside from Caitlyn. So, it might not be as easy as, as it is in, 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 when I'm usually playing the Flash Bomb version. I do like the Mystic and I like the Killing. Even though we're not playing Flash from Peddler, the Flash from should still be really useful against what the opponent wants to do. We don't get Teemo, which is obviously a whole game plan. So that is a little bit concerning, but we do have the share spoil for some draw. We have the Caitlyn, that's pretty nice. Uh, can we just do we just Mystic Shot this? Yeah, let's just Mystic Shot this. Unless the opponent opp needs to have warning shot plus all out. And I'm okay with the opponent using both cards here to save Samira. We could have potentially let them attack, right? I just didn't want them to pass on me and then be able to have all Flare plus all out next turn, right? So we could have potentially waited for them to attack. Okay, they're going to use the Flare anyways. So that's fine. Okay, if you have all out, you have all out. I'm okay with that. None of this help you. They were hoping that they could get what well, Freeze from us or a Lix of Iron, but none of this is going to help you. I guess the share spoil potentially could help you, but that's okay. I'm down to sacrifice my Kaelin because we have another Kaelin in our hand. We can go Chump of Worms to have another blocker while also having. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with this. I'm not gonna let you get your plunder trigger, even if you wanted to. Uh, question here is I kind of like just the Chump one. It's a big unit that the opponent's gonna have to deal with. The opponent has multiple flash bombs. They have the share spoils. We can go ahead and play Caitlyn. Opponent cannot block Caitlyn now with the Eterna. And we still potentially have access to share spoils after we get the attack. Because the opponent is probably going to let this go through. Every time they draw, they're also drawing more into the flash bomb. So unless they have a few air right here. Okay, it's just monkey business, all right? They draw more. They didn't draw. Well, the monkey business is nice because at least it lets them potentially eat up the flash bomb. They have all out? Okay, so warning shot. They're just going to level up this fist. Wow. Oh, they got their share spoil now. Which kind of sucks, because it does let them buff stuff up. Okay, that's one more flash one that we need to kill Inferna. We have multiple of them there. Let's go ahead and do the share spoil that the opponent knows about. See if we have gotten the... Uh... I don't want to play the Mushroom Clash until I get at least the Peddler, by the way. Okay, opponent lost the Father Fury and could potentially have the flash from here. Doesn't hit the Inferno. We do get the Teemo though, which is not bad. Unfortunately, the opponent does get some value out of this. So another Chump one. I have to be a little bit concerned about... Oh, wow, that's going to be... <laughs> the opponent is really playing with fire because this Flash Bombs 
are gonna mean that my Caitlyn is gonna be in a really good spot, huh? So let's just go like this. And let's just play this Teemo down, because we can level up the Teemo with the Mushroom Clouds. All I need is at least one Flash Bomb to hit, and our Kaelin is going to be leveled up. So all I need is at least one Flash Bomb to hit. Opponents is going to get Share Spoils and Investigators here. They're going to draw more here. Okay, so our Kaelin levels up. Opponent was smart to do it now before the Kaelin gets a lot of hit next turn. Because now, 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 at most, we're going to have one Flash Bomb and, and I guess the Puff Caps. I think I just keep this Teemo back as a blocker against the Elusives. And we should be okay. Another Share Spoil. You're going to lose a card from whatever the Inferno has. Yeah, this is this is smart from them. Because, again, it stops my Caitlyn from, from doing a lot of damage next turn. But they're losing two cards here. And one of them was a Pandemonium. So they get to lose two cards here. Um, if we just attack with everything, opponent has opponent potentially has a pandemonium. I think we attack with everything here to start with. Yeah, that, this is telling me that the opponent has pandemonium, right? So I got to attack with everything first. When it goes for Samira, that's cool. I have the Elixir of Iron, so I don't care about Samira as much. Let's go Clump. I just need to have blockers for the Pandemonium, right? I just need to have blockers for the Pandemonium, and we should be okay. I'm still annoyed about the fact that we're not getting... Okay, so I need to go here because of the Fearsome. I'm kind of annoyed that I'm not getting... Yeah, I need to have at least one more Fearsome attacker. I, I, one more fearsome blocker because the opponent can drag, right? The rally could be a problem, but the opponent will need to level up Samira now, which is very hard for them to do unless they got the third warning shot. And they just get rid of the flare. And they're... Yeah, they just get rid of the flare, huh? Okay. And they're going to draw those last two flash points as well, which makes me feel like I should go ahead and just push, push this here. They don't have the challenger, so we have the way to block the fist. The problem is that the team will still die. So I guess we have double elixir. And this is gonna push three damage. So this is gonna push three damage. Okay. Monkey business. We still have blockers for everything. We still have blockers for everything. Other option is to go for sure spoils right now. I don't know that I care. I think we just let them do whatever they want. Opponent cannot really attack into the Caitlyn. I'm guessing they have the rally, by the way. So I'm guessing the opponent has the rally. But here's the thing about the rally, right? If I block this here, I still get to here with Kaylin, right? So let's say I go like this. Opponent can have the second fist for the rally. The all out doesn't work because we have a little iron. So this one all out. We go a little iron. Opponent needs three more cards to level up Samira. And that's not going to be enough. So we go here. The Kaylin just going to win us the game because of her strike. So the Teemo is not as important. I guess if the opponent has another all out or has two cards that can level up the Samara, then that's a problem. But we also have Share Spoils. And they don't. Okay. If they have another, if they have two cards to level up Samara, that could be a problem, like another Swindle. But we saw them using the Swindle already. Tw swindle twice. So I think there was a good chance that they didn't have it. Uh, so yeah, GG's. In this match, we're in against Hyper Jace. The removal is very good against my team, right? Because I won't have... Wow, okay, I like the Peddler. I think it might be too early for Karina. We have three Karinas in our deck, so I don't want to play Karina now. 
and be punished. Okay, we get Karina back anyways. So the, the, they have good removal for team, right? They, we get both cards that we mulligan away. They have Quietus, they have Soul Harvest. Okay, we eat up the Quietus. I have to just eat up the removal now. Because no matter what, they can kill Teemo with everything that they have, right? Obviously, the way that we win is going to be through Peddler. Yeah, so I'm going to play second Teemo and force, force the Soul Harvest here for the Mystic Shot, all right? And then I'm going to play the third Teemo and force him to have a second Mystic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. Triple Teemo hand, huh? Ironically, though, it's not a great hand. It's not a great hand for us. I don't want to play the Peddler into Shock Blast next thing, by the way. I think that's probably a mistake. Okay, Formula. That tells me no Shock Blast. So I can go ahead and play the Peddler. And now the opponent has the choice of which one they're going to Soul Harvest. I can attack with both. Force the opponent to block with the adapter, and I'm cool with this. Second Mystic gets punished by the Elixir now. All right, that's awesome. So second Mystic gets punished by the Elixir. We don't have enough to level up the team, unfortunately. So I don't think we can really do much. Opponent could still have Shock Blast. They're gonna go for a Vengeance? Wow, okay. Um. Wait, why does this... Oh, no, it levels up Timo after the fact. I was like, why is it leveling up Timo right now? So, unfortunately, we can only get six rooms, which is not enough to level up Timo. I do kind of like the insider knowledge right now because I think my hand is too low value. My question is if I want to do the Mystic. I think I go for it. I think I put as many shrooms as I can into their deck. I wish I had one more spell to level up Timo because we will be duplicating those shrooms right now. So I'm giving them a lot of value by letting them um, draw right here. But we just have to settle for this Karina to calm down later, right? So we just have to set down for Karina to calm down later. So we just want to add as many shrooms as possible. Oh, that's a great that's that's a great way for things to start. We can go here, that gives us a blocker for the headstick handler. You're gonna kill? Okay, so you got the, you got the Soul Harvest. That's cute. We have another Peddler, which is amazing. We can now do it with the Shroom Cloud. That's the third team, unfortunately. Opponent's gonna have to have another Vengeance, but we're still gonna get the value from the Shrooms, right? This Kaelin is also gonna be leveled up. So if the opponent goes ahead and kills this guy, I just play the Kaelin, right? So we just go shroom, shroom. Don't know that the British steel is correct, by the way, because you can set up for the Caitlyn attack. Uh, we just play Caitlyn. And now we're pushing for, opponent has to block with one of their handlers. Actually, they have to, like, they have to block with both, because I'm, I'm going to push a lot of damage here. So they're going to have to block with both. And then we just British steel, keep both my units alive, and chill. We have Karina set up. We, that's the second Vengeance. So opponent doesn't have Vengeance for Kaelin anymore. Three Shrooms. Kaelin levels up. She goes to five. Practice, as they say, makes perfect. So Kaelin goes to five now. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's draw. Let's draw. Opponent really cannot attack. Because Kaelin just kills them. Yeah, they go ahead for it. We can go chump, chump one again. We have a pretty big attack next turn. Uh, let's go double motion clan now so that the opponent has more chances of draw them with their natural draw here. And then we open attack and this is going to be 8 damage unless the opponent has a way to kill one of these units. Yeah, that's my shroom. So we push, we open attack first, right? Set up the eight damage. Opponents gonna have to commit another vengeance here if they have it. Otherwise, they go to five. Then we go investigator into Karina. Maybe it's actually correct to go Karina first and not give them more draw. 
Opponent has already committed double Mystic, so this is a good chance they don't have anything here. Yeah, so it's probably better to go Karina first. Uh, the, the, the heal from last turn is saving him, right? Because otherwise they will be dead right here. So we go here. This is going to activate the Flashman as well, so it kills the Financier. Okay, and that's your skin. There we go. Just kind of... This shot whoops being a full four are very difficult for the opponent to deal with. Obviously, I kind of high roll with the triple Teemo, forcing out as much as removal as they had to do. And the share spoil hitting Kaelin was also very nice because they have to worry about uh, Shock Blast, but we just ended up having enough units to just push through whatever the opponent wanted to do. And double Vengeance on the Peddler, even though we got the value from it, just worked out for us. So you just... In this matchup, we're going against Nasus. There's going to be Nasus... Bolts of Helia. They don't draw as much. Uh, we don't have any of our champions, so I think I want to look for Teemo, especially since I have the attack token on one. We get Teemo, which is nice. Double Korean is a little bit weird. Okay, we get the Litzer of Iron. To, uh, well, it doesn't save the Teemo against Haze Spike, unfortunately. So it won't save the Teemo against Haze Spike, because that only takes it up to three. But at least I get to start putting Shrooms right away from the start of the game, which is better than nothing. Opponent already took one shroom. Nice. Wait, this share spoils is actually kind of cute. Yeah, I'm down to take this share spoils now. The reason that I like the share spoils now is because uh, we, you know, we, we we don't know if this team is actually gonna live next time because the opponent could have quicksand, the opponent could have haste spike. It's a lot of cards that the opponent could have here. The problem now is that I can actually level up Teemo next turn, right? Okay, I guess opponent's not gonna let me. I'm just gonna play second Teemo. I don't have to play second Teemo just yet. I don't have to play the second Teemo just yet. Ah, not that we have anything great here, right? Let's go Investigator. It prevents some damage here. So it's gonna prevent some damage from the opponent. The opponent cannot attack. If the opponent has another Soul Harvest, that is a problem. We have the Puff Cap Peddler, though, which is kind of nice. That's not going to work, because we can actually go Elite of Iron to save it. Because the Quietus only deals when it has four or less health. Ah, uh, four or less stats. The problem is that we don't really have a way to level up Teemo here. I wonder if it's correct to level up Teemo first. Before we actually go for... Like, that way I play around a Quietus, right? I play around a second Quietus. The Flash Fish is going to be amazing. Versus Nasus. Soul Harvest is the only thing that scares me here. No need to play Insider Knowledge yet until I have more Puff Caps. Yeah, so the Flash Fish are nice. Wait, their bolts of Helia didn't trigger? Wait. Their bolts of Helia didn't trigger? So that means opponent, all, opponent has all their four cost units in their hand, right? They have their four cost units in their hand. That's actually crazy. As long as this stays alive, opponent cannot get the bolts of Helia value. You do, do you really play that little four cost units? Yeah, okay, there's the dragon. I suspect it. It sucks losing that team, but that's fine. Uh, this dragon is going to be a problem, but we can freeze it. So we can freeze it and deal four to it. And that adds multiple pop cups as well, which is nice. This is this thing is going to die anyways. We need to have the second freeze for the Nasus. Having double Puff Cap Peddler might be enough to still get us there with, with the Karina as well. The problem is that this Karina is not really doing a lot right now. Which feels bad. Like, this feels really bad. And I think I have to insider knowledge. I think I have to insider knowledge right now. Even if I'm giving them a lot of options to draw. Because I think at this point, we just want to get as many shrooms as possible. We'll then go double Karina. 
the opponent's going to be right of negation to stop the Karina, right? I mean, if opponent's going right of negation here, that's fine. And then to entune that, to just add even more shrooms to their deck. And that's one right of negation out of the way. Opponent doesn't have a second one because they would have done it right there. And we still have the freeze, right? So we still have the freeze. We're doing enough. Healing is going to be leveled up now. We have flash freeze for Nasus, which is going to come out next turn. Interesting okay. I'll make a note. <laughs> so Nasus. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, Nasus still comes down. Yeah, Nasus still comes down. We have the freeze for the Nasus, which adds more shrooms. And then I think we can go ahead and do Karina. So we can go like this. And just chill. Opponent even did it the wrong order. I think we do go ahead and just play the Karina now. See how many cards are in the top five? How many shoes? Okay, that's game. <laughs> yeah. Once we had the double Karina and the double Peddler on the field, it was it was going to be really difficult to turn it to do anything. All I need to do is just use as many spells as possible, even if it wasn't efficient, as you saw there with the with the draw three and then uh, with the draw two and then even with the uh, free in, into the uh, failure Telstones or three sisters into the entomb. It wasn't efficient per se, right? I would rather use that stuff for like an access or something, but it was necessary for me to put enough shrooms in their deck for us to settle for the double Karina play. So GG. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's games. They all went really, really well, right? I was surprised because usually I would get scared with Timo killing decks about the RNG on the shrooms, right? And sometimes you might have a lot of shrooms in the opponent's deck, but end up not drawing them and the opponent just survives just barely. Today, we went five and zero with this deck and every game, felt really good and really competitive, right? You kind of see the power that this deck can have with Frelior as a backup. Now, with the Shrooms, as you saw, uh, I, I guess it was in that, um, oh, which, which was, yeah, like the map behind the Shrooms, right? You, you, you have to just rely on the average, right? So when you're thinking, am I gonna have lethal this turn when we go for a Karina play? Always try to think of what the average amount of Shrooms that they're gonna draw might be. Sometimes you're gonna whiff and they're gonna draw under the average and sometimes they're gonna draw over the average But when you're trying to understand whether you want to go for lethal or not Unless you literally have no choice It's always safer to wait until you have the average that you need to actually go for lethal What I mean by that is that if you have Karina on your on your hand and the opponent has I don't know Let's say 40 shrooms and has 10 cards left in their deck. That means that on average they're drawing Four, car four shrooms per card, right? So that means that your Karina, in average, is going to deal 20 damage to the Nexus because it's going to be 4 times 5, which is 20. So you know that you're always going to be safe to play Karina when you have that situation because, on average, she should be killing them. Sometimes you're going to whip. Sometimes they're only going to draw 18 or 19 or whatever, but that's okay. You by, by going towards the average, you have a better chance of getting there, right? If, if you have, like, no choice. If you can wait a little bit longer, if you can wait an extra turn for them to draw an extra car and for you to add more shrooms into their deck and increase your average, then of course you go ahead and do that. But if you don't have that flexibility of waiting, then you just have to rip it and see how it goes, right? So that that's kind of what you have to think. You kind of have to do that that mushroom math, math of understanding on average how many shrooms they're gonna draw per draw, and if you need to wait to add more shrooms so that you can. So that the opponent has less less cards in their hand and less cards in their deck, while you have more shrooms in their deck, etc., etc. But aside from that, the strategy with this deck is very simple, right? Timo is actually super important in this in this version of the deck because we have protection from Timo between the Elixir of Iron and your Fury of the North, if you need it, or even in two in certain situations if you need to play around like a vengeance. Timo is very important with this deck. Because you can easily level up Timo, as you saw in two of the games today against Malphi, Talia, and I think against Nora Jin. We were able to level up Timo, and if Timo gets to hit when he's leveled up and duplicate the shrooms, you have a very good chance of just winning the game. Because all of a sudden, the opponent is going to have at least 30 shrooms on their deck, 
and that's making it so that doing at least one shroom per car for the most part and then you just add more and then settle for your karina later on and your killing etc so timo is one of the critical parts in this deck and the way that you kind of win most of the games Caitlyn is another alternate win condition remember that Caitlyn will hit her ability to hit her level of ability of doing damage to the nexus will happen as long as she strikes so in the fifth samira matchup for example as long as the Caitlyn will have swung back to the samira which by the way i think i misplayed i think i shouldn't have blocked samira with Caitlyn because the quick attack means that the samira that the Caitlyn wouldn't have hit back in the samira if the opponent had a way to level up samira or had a third all out uh, it had to be Kaelin blocking one of the other units to guarantee that we hit that damage against the Samira. Because the opponent didn't really have a good way to rally that turn. But aside from that, remember that Kaelin will always trigger her level up ability as long as she strikes. Which this, what this means, what this means is that if you have a freeze, you can block with Kaelin, allow her to strike while being safe and that's why Freljo can be so good with the Kaelin because he allows you to freeze the opponent unit and be able to block with Kaelin to both add flash pumps and potentially trigger her level up ability what this also means is that the opponent can never use like a single combat or like a prize fight to hit your Kaelin and they also have to be worried when they have the attack token if you hit a lot of your shrooms with your flash pumps you could potentially block with Kaelin and just do the rest of the damage that you need to kill to kill the Nexus so the both ways that you're winning this with this deck are Timo with the Shrooms or Kaelin just have been able to level up. And the third way is Karina. So we talked about Karina, just build up a lot of Shrooms in the opponent deck and then just play Karina. And usually that blows out most opponents that you're going to go against uh, and they won't be able to do anything. The rest of the deck, aside from the win conditions, are the supporting cards, right? So the Peddler is a key unit because the Peddler lets us add a lot of Shrooms to the opponent's deck allowing us to settle the Karina or level up the Teemo really quickly. Usually you want to have the Peddler and then follow up with a Chump Womp or a Clump the Womp and be able to have the Mushroom Cloud or be able to have spells to save the Peddler. Uh, the, the, the Elixir Iron is also really good for the Peddler because it keeps him alive against stuff like Aftershock, which is really the things that we're looking for. Then you have things like your Chump Womp and your, and your Clump of Womps. Those extra Mushroom Clouds can be really critical i just adding multiple shrooms to the opponent we have the veteran investigator which i think is amazing and forcing the opponent to draw extra cards and draw into our bombs more then we have the british steel elixir of iron and flash freeze all of these cards can help us protect our units elixir of iron can help us protect our units while british steel and flash freeze can allow us to block uh sent it with three sisters or allow or slow down the opponent enough so that they're not presenting lethal into us as you saw against the talia malfi deck we were able to just have those have those freezes to stop their open attacks mystic shots can get rid of some of the opponent's elusive blockers like nora or can just be used to present damage to the opponent nexus and share spoils is one of my favorite cards in this deck together with inside knowledge is one of our main draws in this card but the benefit of share spoils is that it guarantees that you get a unit and we're not playing that many units right we do have the clump uh the chump womp and the bear veteran investigators those three are probably the worst ones that you can get with share spoils but the other cards that you can get from share spoils like the timo the killing the peddler and the karina are all amazing hits and why i really go uh, why i really like the share spoils as kind of like a specific tutor for a unit and not just any random card that you might have in your deck and then finally inside knowledge can be used to finish up games sometimes or in certain situations as you saw against the Heimer Jace game, if you have like a really low value hand, it's okay to use the inside knowledge early so that you can actually get value back into your hand. Feels really, really good. Uh, honestly, feels actually really, really competitive with what it can do, especially in the current meta where you can just, where a lot of decks like to draw a lot, right? Like think about Karma, think about like Fizz, Samara, these decks like to draw a lot. So they end up drawing to a Shrooms and kind of helping us out into our win condition. Uh, but yeah. In terms of Mulligan, I think that's the last thing we haven't talked about. It's been a long outro, but I really like the intricities of this deck. In terms of Mulligan, I'm liking the Teemo to keep every single time. And I like the Puffka Peddler and the Kaelin, right? So we're looking for Teemo, Kaelin, Puffka Peddler, and that kind of allows us to start our hand. If we already have Teemo and we're going against like a PNC deck, then I don't mind keeping Elixir of Iron so that we have a way to keep the, protect the Teemo against like a Mystic Shot. Right, so if we have Timo, we can keep a little iron depending on the matchup. Otherwise, you can 
if the opponent doesn't have a way to kill Teemo, you can just push that Elixir Iron away. But pretty much every deck has a way to kill Teemo. So Elixir is usually worth keeping if you already have a Teemo in your hand. But ideally, again, you're looking for Kaelin, Peddler, and the Teemo. And that will allow you to kind of build up to the game plan that you're looking to with this deck. But anyways, enough about that. Ended up being a really long archer because I really like this deck. So hope you enjoyed today's gameplay as, as much as I like playing today's deck myself. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch channel. We stream every now and then. And also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow.